Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway. Now the last couple of diesels I reviewed from Dapo were actually really quite good, so fingers crossed this one will be no different. <laughs> Welcome back everybody to another review. Today's is one that I'm quite interested in. Uh, Dapol have produced this model for quite a few years, but just recently they have released a brand new batch of them and I picked one up. So the loco is this. It is the Dapol streamlined diesel rail car from the Great Western. And this is actually the most I think I've ever paid for a Dapol locomotive. I bought mine from Hattons for £125.76, I think, which is a slightly odd arbitrary number. It is a damn sight cheaper than the R RP though which is 148 pounds something so yeah not too bad at all I have heard good things about them and if you too would like to check out all of the different versions and see the prices and things for yourself I have got an affiliate link down in the description so check that out but to date we are going to be getting this out finding out what this is like I do have one already I have an old Hornby one uh, which actually originated back in the Lima time so it's very old and dated I'm hoping that this one will change everything about that so let's get it out and find out what exactly this is like so as always really from Dapol it's definitely a strong start where the packaging is concerned because as you can see we've got this really sturdy thick cardboard box which to be fair to Dapol has always done a great job of protecting their locos it's always served them well so that's pretty good I will show you the end of the box briefly then so that you can see what this is so this is 4D011005 streamlined rail car 12 not 100% sure what the 12 is that could just be the running number uh, the one I went for is the lined chocolate and cream great western monogram and valance and as you can also see this does support r2 which means second radius track now that better be true because that sometimes isn't when dapol is concerned and my track has no tighter than second radius on it so it should be absolutely fine so we're going to get to it quite quickly today because as you can see there's not much to see on the back of the box so we can get this out now this will be the first time i've had this out of the box as always it is 100 percent brand new from the latest batch so let's find out what this is like the old flying banana okay Right, so we have tons of paperwork uh, presented to us straight away. So let's have a quick look at the owner's guide. Here it is. So we've got a quick start here, which talks a little bit about just running the thing for the first time. It talks about running in, which is fine. Fitting some of the ex accessories, which includes the dummy lamp and lamp brackets, etc. A little bit about lighting. It looks as though there are some different switches, which you can operate in order to alter the, the way the lighting works. And on the back, what have we got here? Oh, it's just a bit about fitting the DCC decoder. So, yep, all very handy stuff. That's always good to have, isn't it? And what's this one here? Uh, this is just the 24-month repair warranty. And, yeah, no quibble. Yeah, I've, I've read about that before. It sounds pretty good, does that? Hopefully, I won't have to make use of it, though. Right, shall we do this, then? We have the foam topper here, which is really, really good. I love that. Uh, it's just great level of protection, isn't it? Okay. Oh, there it is. All right. Can you see that? Look at that. So it looks lovely. What a shape that is. I don't remember my Lima Hornby one having a shape quite like that. Maybe there were different variants. Or maybe I've just misremembered. Or maybe this one just does it better. I'm not sure. But the shape of that looks intriguing, to say the least. Right, let's get this out then. Let me pull out the foam. Well, not foam. Oh, I, I am actually pulling out the foam. <laughs> yeah, that was actually correct. Right, here it is. Cool, there's a fair bit of weight, actually. I mean, this is like a, a single car... I don't know if you'd call it a DMU, but it's a, a single unit anyway. It's got a lot of weight to it. I have to wonder whether it's going to have two driven bogies on it as opposed to just uh, one, because uh, the bubble car did, didn't it? Uh, and it did take a, a hit, actually. The realism took a bit of a hit as a result, but yeah, we'll see whether this one's the same. Okay, so we have a detail bag right here. Let's take this off. Now, that looks like some sort of replacement axle bearings or something like that. There's only two of them, though. I'm pretty sure the instructions didn't mention those either. The instructions talked about fitting lamp brackets, but yeah, what those are, goodness knows. <laughs> My guess is that maybe you can remove some of the valances, perhaps, and uh, fit these onto the bogies. I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, let me know if you've got a suggestion. A bit bad that the instructions didn't mention those, though. I don't think there's anything else. No, it's all pre-fitted, it looks. So, let's get this open. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, this one comes apart nice and easily. I'm not having to struggle with this one. Okay, let's lift it out. Ooh. Oh, this looks great. 
Okay, so there we go. There is a close look. And yeah, this thing looks awesome. Oh, in a lot of the photos I've seen of this, the samples seem to really have quite a sheen to them, a real shine. And this one really does, particularly on the glazed windows there, which look really large, don't they? Very large indeed. So yeah, this thing looks fantastic. Uh, it feels so solid. It's literally incredibly, incredibly solid in the hands. Turning it over, I can see that, yes, we do just have one driven bogey, which is fine. That's all that's necessary. Uh, I can't see any uh, sort of NEM sockets or anything, which means that, unless I'm mistaken, you can't actually fit couplings to this. But like I say, I think this is just a single car unit, so it ain't going to be pulling stuff along. <laughs> You're not going to be hooking up to wagons or anything. But besides that, yeah, it looks good. Uh, the non-driven bogey does at least have pickups on it, it seems, which is really good. Yeah, this thing looks really cool, actually. It seems so solid, which is something that has hit me with quite a few Dapo Locos, which is great. Okay, cool. So I'm going to have a quick look at this. I'll give you some history, and then we'll take a close look together up against the white background and find out just how detailed this thing is. So the rail cars of the Great Western Railway were first introduced surprisingly early, way back in 1933, and they became very successful and popular among passengers as well with their air-smoothed bodywork design. They earned themselves the Flying Banana nickname because the first few examples had rounded lines on them. I've not checked to see whether this one does or not, uh, which made them look a little bit like bananas, of course. This version, though, does represent a 1936 built example. The class was fairly luxurious, with onboard heating, which interestingly was steam powered, apparently that was quite unusual, and a few of them were even fitted with a buffet bar and tables, so super luxurious really. 38 cars were built in total by AEC between 1933 and 1942, although of 38 built, only three remain in preservation, the remainder having been quite sadly scrapped. Okay, so there it is then, my new flying banana up close and personal for you. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not overly impressed with this. Now, I've already said, yes, it feels pretty good in the hands, and that's true. It is pretty sturdy, and there's a really good reason for that, and that reason is it's an incredibly basic model. Now, to be absolutely fair to Dapol here, that is sort of by design. These things in real life were designed to be outwardly very, very simple. They had smooth edges, even balancers to cover up the mechanics of the bogies. I think that's very much partly due to their design. But as a result of all of that, I would have said that A, the price really ought to have reflected it. These things can't have been that expensive to produce given how basic they are. And B, the details that are on there need to be done extremely well. Instead, we've got just plastic grills, no etching or anything like that, so they don't look particularly convincing. Moulded wipers, which are just part of the glazing and have just been painted. We've got unpainted door handles, which just don't stand out and from any sort of distance, those are basically invisible. As you can also see, there's no cab detail of any description. I mean, call me Mr. Collett, but surely they had to be controllable. There have to be some sort of controls inside there. And also the lining, take a look at this. Now, in the, on the photos of the real thing, you can see that the lining is a sort of creamy yellow, and here we've got this sort of metallic golden coloured paint with flecks of metal in it, which give it completely the wrong effect. The running number here is done in the same paint, and as a result, it's barely legible. Now, I'm no expert on livery and such, but to me, it just doesn't look all that good. I mean, look at the Great Western logo there. It really does, in some areas, just look like the old Lima version, just with a much, much higher price, a bit more finesse in the detail, and lights. And it's worth saying that even the ancient Lima model has got some cab detail, as you can see, some controls inside there. So what gives? Why couldn't that have been added? So why this is 150 quid RRP, I have no idea. I think what's happened is this is an older model from a few years ago that Dapple have produced, but with a price like that, I was expecting some amazing features. It's just incredibly basic. I mean, they don't have any buffers to fit, so that's okay. No sort of hooks or anything, no real detail on the buffer beams, for want of a better term. We have got some handrails besides the door, but apart from those, I can't really see any other separately fitted parts. The interior isn't dreadfully realistic. I mean, we have got some seats inside there, but for some reason the motor has been mounted right slap bang in the middle there so that the floor and the whole interior is completely disrupted by that. And it's very noticeable, of course, given the size of the windows. I will say that the glazing looks good, as I've already briefly mentioned. I love the sort of high gloss finish to that. Although the glazing isn't quite flush with the outer body of the Loco as it appears to be on the real thing, which again isn't absolutely wonderful, is it? 
But yeah, I'm just not 100% convinced by it really. Having paid less than £100 for the 121 bubble car in the past, which just had an astonishing level of detail, paying considerably more for this and seeing considerably less detail, mathematically it makes no sense. Let's talk about the positives though. I mean, first of all, I think the valancers look really cool hiding the bogies as they do. As I say, the quality is really good. If you lift the model up, you can feel that the whole underframe is die cast. The chassis is heavy die cast, which is pretty good. The general shape of the thing looks really, really impressive. It has got these sort of uh, rounded edges here, which do make it look slightly banana-like. And I can see that there are some LEDs mounted behind some of the bodywork there. Although they look a bit of a mess. I mean, that centre one looks like someone stabbed a soldering iron through the body to make the hole. Yeah, it's not got a great deal of finesse, has it, that? So yeah, I don't know. I think once again, it's just a case of expectations versus reality. When you pay 125 quid, you expect quite a lot of detail. If not, why is it so expensive? Well, I can't really talk much more about the detail because that's all there is. So let's get it down onto the track. We'll talk about the performance and heaven help Dapple if this thing derails or doesn't work properly. Okay, well, let's try. All right, so there it is then, the Great Western Rail Car by Dapol down onto the track. And although it is very underwhelming, I must say, in terms of detail, it looks okay from a distance like that, doesn't it? And mechanically, it does seem to be quite a bit stronger. Now, unlike the diagram showed, this does only have one driven bogey, which is fine. And it's, you know, it saves a bit of cost, doesn't it, just having one driven bogey? Shame the savings weren't passed on to us, the customer, but we won't talk about that. It does pick up from all wheels, it appears, which is really quite good. And the motor is mounted inside the body, which I've not had off yet, so I can't really tell you much about the motor. Although the wheel set does use a proper set of bearings. And as you can see, there's quite some complex gearing going on there. And of course, the other thing about not having two driven bogies is that it eliminates the need to have a drive shaft going under the floor and, uh, you know, compromising the realism of the interior. Although, funnily enough, less cleverly, they have still mounted the motor under the floor and have a drive shaft going to the bogey. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. That it, it, tell you, it really is like I'm being trolled. <laughs> As somebody's weird uncle bought a Lima one and detailed it up and uh, sent it to me instead. It's bizarre. Right, well, let's give it a try then. Uh, let's see if the lights work. Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed, to be honest with you. I'm sort of taking it quite hard. It's not normally I get annoyed but you know when you spent that kind of money you'd expect a little bit of detail in return it's just yeah disrespectful almost isn't it right i'm turning it up here we go if the performance is good it might uh, salvage things okay it's creeping wow so the slow speed appears to be really quite good well at least that's given us something nice to look at hasn't it look at that first run too See if it go any slower than that. Cool, yeah. Well, congratulations, Dapple. You can at least build a decent mechanism. Can't do much else. <laughs> well, they can do much else. That's the problem. They're capable of excellent detail, as we've seen on the 121s. And I only paid 89 quid for that, although that was heavily discounted. The full price isn't a lot different to this. Uh, the lights do appear to be working. I'll pop that on the rolling road and get some shots of that and insert those there. Uh, are the interior lights working? If they are, they're incredibly dim, I'm afraid. <laughs> I can't see anything inside. I mean, let me uh, dim the lights and give that a try. I mean... <laughs> I can see a little bit of a glow going on inside there. But here's a tip. If in a darkened room the lights are invisible, you probably need to turn them up a little bit. I mean, yeah, we don't want to cook the passengers, but you can give it a bit more than that. If I turn it right up high, it lights up a bit. Yeah, it's all a bit pants, isn't it? The uh, cab lights are good. Hang on, can you see that? Yeah, yep, yeah, you can sort of see the cab lights. They only turn on when they're going forwards. So let's uh, come past again. Yep, yeah, cab lights, reasonably bright. The sort of passenger lights are too dim to see. <laughs> Although I think they are working. If you get really down low, you can see that they're turning on. Why they've got to be so dim, I've got no idea. But they must have been costly to fit, so it's a shame you can't see them. Anyway, I'll start this running in. We'll get it going around the room and uh, see how it looks, shall we? All right, let's try it on these curves then. Come on, fingers crossed. 
Hey, that was good. <laughs> I know I shouldn't really be getting all excited over it actually working properly. It's a basic requirement. But yeah, after last time, I'm really glad to see it just do that curve without any problems at all. So mechanically, it seems to be spot on. It's really quiet, very smooth, straight out of the box. It's done a fantastic crawl and it can only get better, can't it? So performance seems to be the saving grace of this Loco. And the performance is the one area that is massively ahead of the original lever, it seems. Right, well, I'll leave this thing running then, lovely as it looks, and we'll come back to it in a second once it's fully run in. Okay, running in is complete, and I must say that was very much problem free. It ran around for the about 45 minutes that I ran it in. No derailments, no problems, nice and quiet, good and smooth. Now, yes, I know that's a basic requirement, and I don't normally praise models for that, but at this point, we'll take anything we can with this. But it does definitely seem that performance is by far the best feature of this model. So let's give it another slow speed attempt. I think the slow speed has already proved itself pretty well, but we'll make sure that hasn't diminished now that it's running here we go turning it up look at that now that has to be celebrated doesn't it <laughs> amazing slow speed yeah easily a five on performance this and i have measured the pulling power which was unnecessary and I had a job to uh, fit the newton meter to it but it was reasonably powerful uh, 0.3 newtons which is enough to haul 20 coaches obviously this won't be hauling any coaches but it's nice to know that there's a decent mechanism inside there and of course no traction tires either which is a big difference between this and the lima slash hornby version not a lot of differences between them, it must be said, but that is one of them. Okay, so let's get this started again. We'll have a nice run with this, and uh, I guess I'll run some other engines alongside it. So here we go, take it away. A bit slower this time, a bit more realistic. All right, so on the middle line, I have another Great Western Rail car, similarly detailed, which is not something I was expecting to say, uh, but definitely inferior in terms of the finish and such. It is the Lima. Uh, Great Western Rail Car, same as the uh, Hornby one, although the Hornby one has a slightly updated mechanism. Yeah, it must be said that the Dapol one beats this, but uh, only really in terms of performance. The detail is pretty close, really, although I suppose there's more finesse on the Dapol version. But on value for money, I reckon this still has it, because yes, the Dapol is uh, an improvement, but for, what, four times what I paid for this? It doesn't add up mathematically. Anyway, let's get it going. Off it goes. There we go. And I'll show you what's running on the inside line. This is the 121 bubble car, which I'm also a bit annoyed with at the moment. Come to run it this morning, and that's as fast as it can go at about half speed. So I reckon there's something gone wrong with the motor. Uh, during its review, obviously, it didn't run properly. But, I mean, that is full speed. <laughs> and I've run it perhaps once since I did the review on it. Yeah, sort it out, Dapple. I'm not that impressed, to be honest. Either way, if it can limp through another video, I'll leave that to run. So, yeah, unfortunately, I can't recommend spending 125 quid on this. Um, hopefully, you know, once the retailers <laughs> realise that they're not going to be able to shift them for that, uh, if I'm right, that is, then hopefully the prices will come down. Once they're less than 100, I can recommend it just about, but uh, at the current pricings, yeah, I can't really recommend it. If you're desperately in the market for a great Western rail car, they're decent models, don't get me wrong. You're not gonna be blown away by the level of detail, but the performance is pretty good. Yeah, it's a fair enough purchase if you've got a lot of money to spend. If you're just an enthusiast though that likes the look of it, I would hold off or not bother because it's just not that great for what it costs. I feel bad saying that about Dapol because, you know, they're a good company, they do good things. But at the end of the day, if you spend 125 quid with Hornby, you can expect to get quite a lot more from this. So, yeah, I'm sorry to say it, but in my honest opinion, that's the way things are. I forget how much I paid for that uh, Lima one, but it sure wasn't 125 quid or anything close. All right, so here are some of my ratings then for the Dapol Great Western Diesel Rail Car. To be absolutely honest, I was a little bit cheesed off with the level of detail on this one. The price caused me to expect an incredible level of detail, and instead we got a 
pretty basic model with unpainted handles, no cab detail, lining a little bit on the shoddy side, and not an awful lot to see really. So I've given it two stars, not dreadfully impressed with the level of detail. The performance though was an awful lot better. It is a good quiet runner, it seems to be amazing at slow speeds, and it also appears to be very reliable. Uh, the pulling power is okay as well. I measured that this could haul around 20 coaches, although of course that's completely irrelevant because it doesn't have couplings and it's going to run on its own most of the time. So it is a good powerful runner though, if that's what you're interested in. The mechanism's also very good. We seem to have a decent motor in there. Don't know much about the motor without dismantling the thing. Uh, however, we've got proper set of bearings, no traction tyres, pickups on all the wheels. Generally speaking, the mechanism is very good. However, I don't understand why they had to mount the motor sort of in the middle of the loco where it detracts from the accuracy of the interior. Yeah, these days you'd expect a tiny little motor to be mounted to the bogey, but it's a small quibble really, so four start on the mechanism. The quality, generally speaking, is very good because the model is so basic. <coughs> it is pretty sturdy, it must be said. We've got a nice heavy chassis. I must just say the quality of the lining though let it down slightly, so I have docked it a mark there. Value for money though is where this really fell down. This has an RRP of £148.70 and I paid £125.76. I cannot honestly see any reason why this model would have to be so expensive. I mean, the production costs can't be that high, can they? There's no cab detail, the paintwork's very basic, there's no couplings to fit, there's no buffers to fit, there's only a single driven bogey, the detail's very basic. Why would it need to be so expensive? Uh, when you think what Hattons did with their Class 66 for £2 more on RRP, this doesn't seem like a good deal. So I have to say, value for money, very, very poor here. Either it's an inefficient design or Dapol are just being a little greedy. I can't say for sure, but not impressed. I was expecting more. Overall then, that is not too much of a bad score, 6.80. Yeah, it's not a bad score, but it's not great either. Into the logbook it goes then, and it is fourth just above the Backman 43XX Mogul and below the Helgen Garrett. Yep, overall, not terrible, but think very carefully if you're planning to get one. So don't get me wrong, I think it's a great looking model. Overall, it's a decent model. You know, the lights are great, the performance is wonderful, blah, blah, blah. And I think if I'd, you know, seen the price of these and they were £100 or something close to that, my expectations would have been different. I'd be thinking, you know what, yeah, it's not dreadfully expensive. I'm not expecting an incredible amount of detail on this, but, you know, I can expect a degree of quality. I think the outcome would have been very different. The problem is the price is just way off the mark for what this is. So let me know, do you think the price is reasonable or not? Uh, I say not, you guys be the judge and we'll see what prevails. Overall though, yeah, it's a welcome addition to the fleet. And once I've gotten over having to spend nearly 130 quid on it, I'm sure I'll enjoy it. And if you are interested in how much this weighs, 395 grams is the answer. Reasonably heavy, not massively so, but certainly heavy enough for its purpose, which is pretty good. So there we are then, folks. I do hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know, of course, what you thought of the review. Was I too harsh? Was I not harsh enough? I'd be very interested to find out. For the time being, though, thank you for watching. Thank you very much for your company, and I will see you very soon, hopefully, with another video. All right, folks, take care of yourselves, have a great week, and I'll see you next time.